In January, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Helba Zelstra, and the Dutch government decided to expel Eritrea's top diplomat to the Netherlands after a Dutch journalist published a recording that was secretly made in the Eritrean consulate in The Hague. On the recording, you can hear the man asking for an Eritrean ID so that he can go on vacation and visit his family in Eritrea. And you can hear the consulate employee explaining that in order for the man to receive the ID, he must first sign a statement admitting that he left Eritrea illegally and pay a 2% diaspora tax over the amount of time that he has been abroad. The man refused. He felt that by admitting to a crime, he would be arrested once he arrived in Eritrea. He also didn't want to pay a 2% diaspora tax to a government that he sees as a dictatorship and regime. Following the publication, Salstra declared Eritrea's top diplomat to the Netherlands persona non grata and stated that the recording should be seen as mounting evidence of Eritrea continuing to force tax payments from people who fled the government. Prior to his expulsion, I was able to interview Chexta Jebren Shemwai. It has two meanings. It is voluntary in a sense. Nobody is being forced if he doesn't pay. If, if someone wants to, to get consular services in the country or in the embassies, then he has to feel, to, to, to fulfill his obligations. That it is, it is compulsory that he has to pay 2% tax. Otherwise, he is not entitled to get those services. The Eritrean Ministry of Foreign Affairs believes that the expulsion violates the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Adding a twist to the story is that Zalstra resigned as Minister of Foreign Affairs in February after admitting that he lied about being at a meeting in 2016 with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Zalstra falsely claimed that during this phantom meeting, President Putin spoke about building a greater Russia. He said that this meant that President Putin wanted to invade the Balkan states and claim them as Russian territory, which would be an act of war towards all NATO nations. Eritrea expert Dr. Miriam van Rijzen advises the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Dr. van Rijzen also worked on the report of the Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in Eritrea. A majority of UN member states voted against the report because they felt it was biased and politically motivated. New arrivals that I have spoken with have told me that they left the country due to the demands of national service, low wages, not having access to specific medical resources and for possibly being arrested for working as a journalist for an opposition website. Mr. Samoy explained that Eritrean clandestine migrants know exactly what they need to tell officials. They are not politically uh, against the government of Eritrea initially. When they come here, they have to report that the, the, the government in Eritrea is a dictator, the government in Eritrea, is, there is no democracy in Eritrea, we don't have any rights. Unless they say that, how can they be accepted here in Europe? So this is the reason that they have to give all these reasons, all the bad things that they can mention about Eritrea, and they are accepted here. Supporters of the Eritrean government from around Europe came together in The Hague to demonstrate against the Dutch government's decision to expel Mr. Semwai. The Eritrean diaspora isn't a homogenous group who all hate their government. This demonstrator explains the differences. Yeah, you have a flüchtling die op 25 30 years geleden gevlogd zijn vanuit van van tegen de Ethiopische regime. Maar je hebt ook een vluchtelingen die kort geleden zijn gekomen, binnengekomen. Die, er is een grote verschil tussen die twee groepen. In de media wordt niet duidelijk gemaakt. Wij zijn voor de Nederlandse bevolking één Eritreeërs, één soort probleem. Maar dat is niet zo. Wij hebben geen probleem met onze regering. Maar de nieuwe mensen wel. Dat mag ook als ze dat hebben. Maar moeten ze ook niet ons wegcijferen. This man explained he came to make a statement. And I came here to uh, give my impression to the government of uh, Ireland that they uh, lie. The government of Eritrea, they don't force us to pay. And we won't tell them.
that is our right, is our money to pay for our government. And that 2% is only for rehabilitation of Eritrea. He sees the attacks on Eritrea as fake news and gives an example. First of all, they say when there was uh, the ghetto of uh, underage, the Orthodox Church, they, they make them pregnant. And that's what the first lie. The Dutch media actually reported that there were around 20 women claiming that they were sexually assaulted and impregnated while visiting this church. I wanted to know the current status of this case, so I contacted the public prosecutor's office in Rotterdam, and they explained that no one had filed police reports and that they found no evidence supporting these claims. Demonstrators are disappointed with the Dutch government. continue to support President Afwerke and are tired of not being heard. Namens ons wordt van alles gezegd in de media daar wij nu wij niet mee eens zijn en worden we ook niet gevraagd op onze aan onze mening. En daar ben ik niet mee eens. Als je over mij wil praten, praat eerst met mij. Between these two realities lies the truth. One sees a dictatorial regime while the other side sees a self-reliant government that doesn't bow down to imperial powers. In order for me to get to the bottom of these truths, I will have to travel to Eritrea and go to the horse's mouth. Is the national service indefinite? Why are wages so low? Does the country lack proper medical resources? And is there freedom of the press? This is Kevin Roberson in The Hague for the Robeson Report.